Welcome to the REI Foundation Podcast, where we cover all the steps and strategies to make your real estate dreams a reality. Now your hosts, Jason and Peely. Well, hello again, and welcome to another edition of the Real Estate Investing Foundation Podcast. Happy to have you again. We are very excited for today's show. We are going to talk about another way that you can make money with multifamily investments, and you may not even be thinking of this direction. So we're very excited to welcome Kevin Gardner to the show. Kevin, how are you? I'm doing great, Jason. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. So a little bit about Kevin. Kevin's been nearly 20 years with Comcast, including time at the Midwest Division as Vice President of Sales and Marketing and an Area Vice President. And throughout his career, he's been responsible for managing the team that negotiated telecommunications access agreements for cable companies with multifamily property owners. And then in 2007, he started Telecom Market uh, Marketing Strategies, which is a parent company of the company that we're going to focus on today, Multifamily Utility Solutions to fill the needs of property owners and third-party vendors to help them better understand the cable operator perspective, maximize their business opportunities, and deliver incremental revenue. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Sounds like I've got the first thing to do is clean up that bio so it's easier to read, right? Oh, that's all right. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you get slammed and I go, well, there's a lot of big words in here. And I'm yeah. <laughs> a worded kind of guy. So that, that's where you said, but we're good to go. We're here now. Awesome. Nice uh, to have you. That said, thanks so much for coming on. And the way Kevin and I met, we actually met through a, uh, another group who um, just basically introduced us, uh, Jake and Gino. We've had both on the show previously. And they were talking about ways they were able to maximize their property using something, a few different things that we don't always think about. So Kevin, tell us a little bit about what you do and how you translate that to multifamily properties. Sure. The, the, the simple um, way people refer to it most of the time is cable contracts, right? So each multifamily unit um, property owner has uh, needs a contract with the cable provider. And many people don't even realize this. They think they only need the contract if they're doing a bulk build situation or something like that where they're paying for the cable. But that's not actually the case. So the uh, cable company has the right to provide service in a municipality, a city, a township, whatever that is. Um, and then they have the uh, right to provide service to the individual end user through another contract. But in the multifamily environment, they're, they're the middle person. They own private property that the cable provider needs access to. And we negotiate those cable rights, the access rights to allow them on the property. And many, you know, many, many owners just think that it's, it's granted oftentimes with the uh, cable franchise that's in the, in the city, but it's not. It doesn't cover the private property of, of multifamily property owners. So talk to us, give us a scenario about how this can come into a play and where a possible owner could use this to start building another revenue stream for their property. Sure. You mind if we talk about Louisville? Sure. Let's talk about Louisville. Yeah. All right. So um, a a as you mentioned, you and I uh, met uh, through Jake and Gino a um, little over a year ago. And at that point, you had a property in Louisville, you had just purchased it. And we um, were able to determine uh, that there was no current valid contract in place to have the cable provider down there on site. So we approached them and said, hey, you know, our records show that there is no contract that allows you access to our property. So we would like to talk to you about, you know, getting a contract in place. And they gave us a proposal for a contract. Now you got to be careful. You don't want to throw them off because they don't have a contract because that's disruptive to your residence. And so we didn't want to do that. Um, so in, instead we got a proposal in hindsight, it was a wise decision that we walked away from that proposal. We did not enter into an agreement. And technically, because they don't have the right to be there, we could have asked them to leave. But that disrupts all the, all the uh, you know, residents, and, and we didn't want to do that. So we decided to wait. And uh, several months ago, you came to me and said, guess what? We got another property in Louisville. Let's, uh, let's combine those, and let's, let's take a look at it. And um, now we've, we've got a much better offer on the, on the table. So the whole thing is you're giving them access to numerous customers, right? Between your two properties down there, we're giving them access to about 70 customers that are paying them. 
there's, there is value to that. Without that access from you, they don't get that money from those 75 customers. So there's a, uh, having been on the cable side of things for so many years, um, I understand the process from their view. And they agree that there is value there. I don't want to walk away from those customers. I want those customers. So what can I afford to pay Jason for access to his residence? And so they look at an ROI model just like we would for in, you know, investing in, in multifamily. And they come up with a number and they determine, and then we determine if, if we want to uh, agree to that number or not. So what's a few different ways to, to look at how it could be structured and maybe some pitfalls to try and avoid? Yeah, there's, there's um, a variety of different forms of compensation that we can get. Um, one is called upfront door money, which is basically in exchange for this agreement um, at this term with these rights that you're giving us, we will pay you X number of dollars per door. That's one way to do it. That's very appealing for the multifamily owner that maybe has just bought um, the property or is interested in dropping some money into the property for an improvement maybe that they hadn't planned for. Um, one of the, one of the uh, properties that Jake and Gino did this with, they had just bought it. They were in the process of improving it, increasing the rents, and they had a need for cash to um, improve the pool area. We negotiated an agreement. They took that money, not out of their pocket, but directly from the cable company, improved the um, pool area. And as the rents were going up, people were seeing a tangible improvement. So if you need a lump sum of money, that's the way to go. If you're looking at more of an ongoing revenue stream, um, there's, the other option is called revenue share. And what you do is you get a monthly check. It's almost a commission check, right? So it's almost like a, a multi-level marketing, if you, if you will, right? So these are the people that you have given the company access to. Depending on what they buy, you get a percentage of that revenue. And that percentage is usually, um, it's usually a sliding scale based on um, hitting certain benchmarks. And then the, the third option is if we want to, you know, kind of split the difference, we ask for um, both. You know, maybe we'll take a little less door money, but we'll get some recurring revenue over the term of the uh, agreement. Sure. So it just depends on what your long-term goals are as a multifamily investor. If you need money, you need cash up front, we go the door, door um, fee route. If you're looking just to improve the ongoing cash flow of your property, then we would suggest the revenue share model. So let's talk about other places where you may have to make a decision, right? They, there may be an opportunity where they offer you a contract, but it's a bulk contract versus a non-bulk contract. Can you explain what the difference is and why one may exist where the other may not? Yeah, um, bulk contracts um, have become more popular because some of the cable providers are encouraging them. And what they're, um, the way they're presenting them is it's an amenity that you're providing to your residents. Um, so in a bulk agreement, the you pay um, every month for every one of your residents, or I'm sorry, every one of your units, that's, that's the key, is it's every unit, regardless of whether you have somebody in there or not. So you pay for their cable, TV, or internet, or both. And you're locked into a, you know, it's, an, it's a fixed expense. Now, the flip side is what they tell you is that you can then charge an amenity fee in some cases. You can add it to the rent. Or if you're below market on rent and you're bringing your, your rent up, or if you're in a very highly competitive marketplace, you can, you know, use that to differentiate you from the guy across the street. So it really comes down to an individual situation. It's what's best for your property. And that's why, you know, it's hard to give you specific guidelines because everybody's situation is a little different. How many units you have? How competitive is it? Are you looking to buy and flip? Or are you looking to buy and hold? You know, um, what other contracts do you have in place? Um, are there any new competitors on the horizon? And we look at all these things um, before we make a recommendation um, because everyone is a little bit different. 
and than now the other the one. Non-bulk option is, of course, the opposite way. That's where the yeah, where the you are giving the cable company the right to provide service to your residents. You are not the middle person. If they non-pay on their cable bill, that's on the cable company. It doesn't impact your uh, your rent or your relationship with them whatsoever. That's an, you're you're out of that um, you're out of that equation altogether. Sure. And what we focused on, what we were aiming at, and what we're hopefully eventually getting is that we wanted to do non-bulk, not be reliant that if stuck for, if we have tenant or units that are being turned over or units that are waiting or vacant, we wanted to have the option to have a non-bulk agreement with a door fee and a revenue share. And that, that I guess I'll call that the holy grail, right? That, that's, that's the direction for us. Maybe not for others, but for us, that, that's what we are, our aim and our focus. Right. And, and if, I re, if I recall correctly, the, um, you had a little bit higher vacancy rate than, than you wanted um, when you took over the property because you saw it as an opportunity, right? You're going to make some uh, improvements and, and, and get the rents up to market and, and you know, increase the occupancy rate. Correct. In a bulk agreement, you pay for all units, not all customers, not all customers that want the service, but all units. So if you've got 94 units and you've got 74 occupied, and of those 74, only 30 of them really want cable, doesn't matter. You pay for all 94 units. You pay a discounted rate because it is a bulk situation, so there is that value. You are not paying rate card rates, but you are paying for all units every month. And now talking about this is important to understand the contract, right? Because you also want to look at existing contracts when you are buying a property, because when you sell a property, the contract you have, a cable contract or other, doesn't necessarily void with the new ownership. So I'll be honest with you. Yeah, sorry. I, I'll be honest with you and say I've never seen one that voids with um, sell. It, it, it usually withstands the, the transaction. It, it goes with the property, not with the current owner. So yes, I encourage people all the time to make sure that if they don't own the property yet, make sure in the due diligence that you ask about the cable contract. I had one this week, earlier this week, and they are closing uh, on Friday. And they um, wanted me to inquire, and they were told by the previous owner there is no cable contract. Well, I contacted the company that provides the service and says, no, we, we've got a contract and it's good for another two years. So in that situation, if it was a 10-year contract and it's still two years, then they should be going back to the owner if they got money for it and asking for their prorated share. Hmm. So I would always, always, always encourage to look into this. And if they say there is none, I would say, let us check. And so what does your company do to facilitate the process for, for property owners or prospective property, property owners? Yeah, well, I mean, we've been in the, in the business for so long that um, we, we know who to contact. Um, sometimes we need a letter of authorization, um, you know, uh, certainly to get a copy of the contract we would, but sometimes they can tell us quickly, yeah, you know what, there is a contract or no, there isn't a contract. Um, and, and the cool thing is we do all this without a contract with uh, somebody like yourself who's a multifamily investor. Um, we do all this on the front end. We don't actually get into a contract with you until we've got a proposal on the table and we're ready to, to, to get money coming in because I don't want a stack of, of contracts um, on my desk yeah. and having to, you know, having to file um, if they're, you know, if, if we don't need one, because if we find out that there's a contract in place and there's nothing we can do for you, then why did we go through the trouble of, of getting a contract with you? You know, it's just unnecessary. I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of unnecessary work. Understood. Understood. Now give us a, a, a one, two, three step of if, if someone is looking to find this option of what they can do to add to their property, what would be the start out steps they should take? Yeah. Um, Back you and get you, get you moving on it. Right. So I, well, that, we like, yeah, we like to think that's a, a great first step, but um, certainly if, if you're buying the property, ask the um, owner or look through the due diligence papers and see if you can find an agreement. If not, ask the owner and ask them to ask the company if there is one. If they can't find one, then come to us and let us ask and, and see if there is one. Um, if there is one, you know, let us audit it and take a look at it and make sure, especially if it's something like revenue share, 
you got to make sure that that gets transferred over to you. So if it's, if, if there is a current agreement in place and it's revenue share, you got to make sure that the, the checks are going to the new owner, not the old owner. So, you know, that's another opportunity. Um, you know, and, and some of these things either auto renew or some of these agreements um, in order for you to get out of them or renegotiate them. Um, there, there's a, an extended window. It can be as, as, as much as, uh, you know, three to six months where you have to give notice of intent to renegotiate or get out of the agreement. So we always encourage everybody to make sure that they know what that is, mark it on their calendar to get the process started. Because I, honestly, I had one, um, I think it was about six months ago, they missed the window by one day, one day, and then a two-year auto-renew period kicked in. Oh, wow. And they were stuck. And they were stuck. You know, the, the other thing I'll tell you about the um, bulk versus the um, individual bill is I've had luck, if you want to do bulk later, I've had luck taking a door fee agreement and going to the cable company and saying, we would now like to do a bulk. They're more willing to do that than they are if you go to them and say, hey, you know what, bulk's not working out for me. I'd rather go back to a door fee. So, um, you know, oftentimes you got to be careful. Um, you know, if you're going to err on the side, err on the side of door fee, you can always get bulk later. If you do bulk door fees uh, or revenue shares, harder to get later. Awesome. Thank you for that. So, Kevin, yeah. if, if people want to reach out for you, find out more about your company, what's the best way to find you? Um, our, our website, multifamilyutilitysolutions.com. Uh, I can be reached. Yep. Yep. Just spelled out. You know what? We're, we're new and we've gone through this branding thing. Ultimately, we'd like to maybe shorten it to MUS, but for the time being, you know, we're going to stick with multifamily utility solutions. Uh, because we, we, we can help on other things as well. Um, it's not as common. It's a very small part of our, our, our business, but we do have in the states that are deregulated for electric and gas, um, and there's only about a dozen of them. Uh, we do have a broker who, if, uh, you know, in the event that you're paying for a, a high electric or gas bill, we can have him look at it. And again, um, it's not... You know, he can, he can look into it and see if there's an opportunity there. And, you know, here's the other thing, Jason, I, I want to emphasize is we don't get paid unless you get paid. We do all this legwork and we don't get paid. The only time we get paid is if you do a deal and you get paid. We are basically commission only. And, and we believe in that because, you know, we believe in win-win situations. Why should I do you know, why should you put your faith in me um, and pay me if I don't benefit you in any way? You know, I just, I just, I just don't like to do business with that. You know, I was in corporate America for a long time. And when I left to start my own business, I wanted to do business with people I liked, respected and trusted. And if I'm asking for money up front before I know if I can even do anything for you, you know, why would I get somebody who I respect and trust why would I, why would I deal with them that way? You know? So, so we, we don't even, we, we don't even get paid in, in, until you do. Well, we're excited to see what we can do with our cable contract with you. We, we have some good premise on the table. Unfortunately, we are not in a deregulated state. So we are stuck with our utility companies currently, but if we do move into those states, we definitely will look in that avenue too, noting that utilities are one of the most expensive things that, happen on our property so kevin yeah thank you yeah so much for the time today we really appreciate all the information you shared how about one more free tip for you and okay. every anybody that watches if it. you if you have one thing i've seen that saves people a lot of money we don't even get involved with it because honestly i don't want you paying me for this tip if you have a trash contract talk to your trash competitor talk to the, whoever's doing your trash removal ask them for a better offer You'd be surprised how many times by just asking, you get a better offer. Because trash, believe it or not, has actually gotten fairly competitive. So that's the free tip of the day. I love it. We love free tips here. Another multifamily tip right there. Send there you go. Out already. Perfect. Yep. Call and ask. What can they say? No. That's right. You don't know yeah. what to ask, right? And, it, it, and it's an easy one. It's, it's not time consuming at all. You take your bill, you look at the top, you call the number and say, hey, I just bought this. 
and I'm shopping my trash deal around. What's your best rate? That's great. Kevin, yeah. thank you so much for that. That's great. Thank you for all the tips on the cable contract. We know it. We love it. We're using it on our property. So if you have not thought about a way to implement another revenue stream on your property, here was one today with Kevin Garner. Kevin, thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot, Jason. I appreciate it. Well, this is Jason with the Real Estate Investing Foundation podcast. Thank you so much for listening. And if you like what you hear today, please go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating and review. It's super helpful to keep the show out there and get it to more listeners. Have a great day. Bye now. Thanks for tuning into the REI Foundation podcast. Check back next time for more awesome tips and strategies to launch your new you in real estate.